No, I think I just openly admit that I don't have all the answers. I think that's where I start, right? I don't have all the answers, but this is what I have done in my... Big and cruise for Jimmy? Hey, Alex, are you driving? How's your experience so far? I think this has been the craziest one for me yet. What do you think of that? I, it's been overwhelming for me. <laughs> it's, but I think it's gonna create for some great stories. Um, at last in intelligence, we just got some, fortunately we can actually talk about all of this yes, now yeah. after the yes. thing. So what did you think? What was your Oh, offer? okay. I'm gonna say I was picking up the pieces from my brain off the floor because <laughs> uh, the moment they talked about Rovo, and yeah, we can talk about that. So just the fact that they're making the ability for you to get rid of menial tasks let people do things that are important i like atlassian's take on ai right because so many a lot of companies right now are uh, maybe microsoft's the closest one to productivity but i'm not seeing a lot of people right now focus as much in productivity as opposed to like general purpose ai yeah because this is really like a game changer right if you can i think uh what was it anu had that thing which is going to loom saving what, what was it 400,000 plus yeah. meetings yeah. right but now imagine with more ai being folded in like how many meetings do you go to that could have been an email or could have been an im well they were talking about the fact that the one of the the virtual teammates from roku one of the agents that they had um saved their development team about eleven thousand hours in creating pull requests for just cleanup tasks so you're not scared that ai is going to replace our jobs yet I I don't think it's going to replace the job. I think there's I, I think it's going to morph things. I yeah. think there like every time I have automated a part of my job out, they've found something more to give me. So I think that's what's going to end up happening is we're going to find that the what people are doing is going to be much more thought provoking. We're not going to have a lot of jobs that are just menial point click things. Right. But um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not scared. You know, after after listening to Doctor Fei Fei, yeah, uh, I feel way more confident that it's not like. Yes. I, I was I when ChatGPT first came out. I I looked at my wife and like the moment you can type in what you want and like give me code, yeah. I told her I'm like it's game over. But <laughs> I will tell you that during the talk today, right, I did feel a lot of my job becoming obsolete. Oh, in it, what way? Like the request types. Right, the automated just type in what you want and JSM portal will be created for you. The other thought that I was having during the keynote was like, okay, great. Now I gotta train everybody how to use this stuff. <laughs> so how do you feel like that like that from a company perspective? Like what's what what was going on through your head of like, okay, how do we roll this out to my team or my company? I don't know how at this point in time. Do you I... do you think it's so easy that like, because I can kind of see it working both ways, right? I can see AI helping me as an admin. Yep. I can also see it creating a ton of problems because now everybody's like, let me do it. I can do this. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's still not perfect. And it's going to cost more headaches for you. What do you think? I think there are certain features that right out of the gate are going to make things easier. Um, first thing that comes to mind is giving people the natural language JQL. Yeah. I waste so much of my time with people saying, hey, I'm trying to look for this thing, but I don't know how to write the JQL for it. Have you tried AI for or natural language for automation rules yet? I have not tried for oh automation rules. Oh my gosh. Rules. I was like, that's one of my biggest things where like, somebody's like, hey, can you make an automation rule for this or that? And I'm like, sure, let me think about it for a minute. Yeah. But now I just go to, because it'll give me the, the hard part of the logic of yep. figuring it out. And it does it for you. You should try it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit. What yeah. about, so you're like the certification king. I am not going to claim to be the, the king. Um, how? You're one of the more outspoken leaders, yeah. thought leaders in certifications. Why? Um, like, how did, how did you feel like that was like, that was the anchor you were going to drop? I think it was an accident more than anything. Um, so in 2019, I attended T well, Summit at the time for the first time. Hadn't been involved in the community. And because they had a deal on where you could take a certification course at the time, um, like the prep course was a live training course and then they gave you a voucher for the exam. And I'm like, you know what? I've been doing this for about five years. Why don't I take the course? And if I'm comfortable with everything that's being delivered, then I will try the exam. And I scored a 98 on the exam. And I'm like, that was cool. Half of it was I wanted to prove to myself um, that I actually had the knowledge that I, you know, 
I, I doubt my abilities a lot. Imposter syndrome is definitely something I suffer from. So that was a proving to myself that I, I knew what I, I knew. Mm -hmm. I thought it, what I thought I knew was there. And then, you know, the success of doing one, I kind of wanted to do more. It just so, became an addiction. <laughs> well, and then, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, I, you and I started YouTube channels at about the same time. And my first goal was to get a guide out for Atlassian Access because it's one of the it is hard. top things that people talk about in the community of just getting started. And then I just said, you know what, I'm just going to do a, a quick certification video. And people went crazy over it. And Biro and Nikki asked me if I'd do uh, one for PM72. And then it just kind of, I got a bunch of people saying, Robot. hey, are, can you do one for this exam? And then, you know, the live learning came up and they said, hey, would you be willing to talk about certifications? So how do you feel about the live learning? I love it. I think it's fantastic. I really enjoyed my time, but any struggles or did you, has it been smooth sailing? It's been smooth sailing for me because I came from Twitch as a game streamer. So I just reskinned, I reskinned everything and I just <laughs> use. logo, you're good to go. I actually prefer live streams to videos uh, because I feel like it's, more in my wheelhouse and my channel actually blew up a bit but live streaming that. is much harder than a video i don't think so i've decided it and this is just from a live streaming background if i fumble on a word i don't care yeah because on a live stream you can't cut that out no. so it's just it's one of those things where i i don't know maybe it's just more that's my thing yeah. now. I'm interested to see what Loom's going to do with that because they said that the AI will cut out some of those ums and things. Mm -hmm. And I know I do that a lot, <laughs> but I kind of want to try it and just see how it cleans up a, a video for Do me. you script any of your videos? No. Okay, yeah, I don't either. I, I can't script. I have tried to script and I end up going off script and then I start freaking out because I've gone off the script. So I just... That, that's how exactly. So I script and then like in my mind, I remember the word. I'm like, dang it, I just messed that up. But yeah. it just it just threw the whole thing off for me. So I just said, no, I'm just, I'm not going to script. And so obviously you make a lot of content. Anything for work, like do, does that kind of overspill into your work life? Or uh, does, do people know you make videos at work? I, I found out that people actually do reference my videos for things and I didn't know that. So uh, yeah, it's kind of neat that way. Um, I think it's more... I don't do the videos for work. Um, it's all doing it for the community, um, but there are people who appreciate it. And my boss is fantastic that he wants us to give back to the community because of the you know, benefits of me having direct access to some of the product managers where I can give them our pain yeah. points. And you know, in some cases, it actually has made a difference. Yeah. And as a content creator, like where do you stand with the, with the idea that you know, people look up to you, right? Like they, they expect a certain level of uh, not authenticity, but just like authority. But we're wrong too sometimes, right? Like how did, does that put any pressure on you? No, I think I just openly admit that I don't have all the answers. I think that's where I start, right? I don't have all the answers, but this is what I have done in my experience. And if someone says, hey, this is what I've done that's different than yours, that may change my opinion. Yeah. And that was kind of the idea between behind my 12 hour live stream for the um, ACP 520, right? Because I'm like, I'm going to, I had zero confidence that I was going to pass that test going into it. But I figured like, you know what, let me at least live stream myself learning it because yeah. I don't know all the concepts, right? I don't, I've never been trained professionally for any of the Alaskan products <laughs> versus like someone like you who obviously you have all the certification. So there's a little bit of authority. I, mean, I don't think I've been professionally trained though, right? Like That's I, something we should talk to Alaskan. I, I mentioned it to Alaskan last year, like train the trainer. Yeah. You know how much time we spend? I'm trying to think. I've taken, like, yeah, I've taken a couple of the, the courses, but nine times out of 10, some of them, I, I know all the information that's in yeah. them. So. But there's like new stuff, right? All this AI yeah. stuff, like, you know how much time we're gonna invest trying to learn it so we can then teach it? Yeah. I feel like Alaska really needs a program like literally train the trainer, right? Like help us, help your community. I think and they're trying to do I that. Think, I think, I'm optimistic after our champions discussion we had on Tuesday. Yeah, I think they're trying to do that. I think it's been one of those things where community and university have been two disjointed things for a long time. And I think they've realized that, you know, bringing them together is going to be better things. And I think that's, you know, allowed the community to say, this is how we feel. This is the things we'd like to learn. And they're like, oh, cool. We should do more of those.
So. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming to an end here, and I do want to ask you a hard question. I don't know if yeah. we have time, but how do you feel about like us as creators, the, the aspect of you know obviously giving out to the community, but then the business aspect of it, like monetize, monetizing. And I'm the where, worst where do you, one to ask But where do you that. draw, but how do you feel like, like where do you th feel the line is? Like when does it become too much that you're not no longer doing it for an authentic self, but rather as a business? I don't. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Like, if, if you look at my channel, so you and I started about the same time, right? Mm -hmm. um, how many subscribers do you have on your YouTube channel? 16,500 ish. Do you know how many I have? A thousand something? No, a little over 700. Okay. But it wasn't until the live learning that I got to, I was only sitting at about 300. Mm. And that's because I have chosen not to care about the analytics, I have chosen not to do any paid commissions. I do content because I care about it. Right. So I'm probably not the one to ask about from that, that it's just a, I don't do it unless it's because I want to. Right. I, this is a hobby for me. Well, yeah. thank you very much for this and a special thank you to Salto. We're partnering up with this initiative here and hopefully you enjoyed it. I have very much enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of the season. Yes. Special thanks to Salto for putting this entire initiative together. Salto is a complete DevOps platform for configuration management for Jira, JSM, and Confluence. It allows teams to automatically copy configurations between sites, whether you're doing sandbox to production or a cloud production to another cloud production. It does it really, really well, and most importantly, very, very easily.